So yeah, the um, I was uh, thinking of uh, just showing them quickly in comparison to the others. I haven't done that for a while, and the um, yeah, it's um, like compared to the other ones. Oh, like, now I have like those on the sides here as reference, so it's not super easy to see. But like you see, they're all in an orthographic. And you can see like what was my intention with their their heights and everything and so the the spider bot her she's uh much uh, smaller than the, than the other ones and you can see how tall i actually made uh mantis It was really hard to make um, the beetle's arm bigger than that. Like they, most most of them have like about the same size for uh, the arms, or at least like the comparison of size is not like that huge between like their primary arm and secondary arm. Let's call them that. And um, but beetle, I actually had to put his arm like super small, or else it just just didn't fit with the the silhouette I intended. Samuel, buenas, gracias. Gracias y también. Tú también. Hmm. <laughs> Not so sure how to say that. <laughs> Thanks to you too. <laughs> All right. Space nerd, hello, hello. All right, let's get into it. The... Um... <clears throat> So we were working on the uh, just uh, the, f the final fundamentals for the arms, uh, for the legs and, and all, right? And really the only part that's missing is uh, the tibia. So, uh, so yeah. So we should get into that. Uh, feet were the last part we did. It's just like the framing of them, right? The detailing is what's, what's left. Um, it would be good to actually have a... So have the foot exist in... Um, it's like a temporary mesh on the other side, so let's do that. Mirror it. There we go. So now there's just like an instance that exists on the other side. Yeah, Tabian is a uh, true, but I, I'm, I'm like, okay, if I say thanks to you as well, thanks to you too, would be gracias. To Tabien, oh, I'm not sure. So this is channel is gonna quickly gonna start to turn into like a, a Spanish class. <laughs> All right, so um, the parts that are in um, pink, salmon, whatever, uh, are the things I'm gonna be working on today. Once again, just a reminder: I'm working upside down for the the tibia section, just. Uh, because I wanted to experiment how bad it can get, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not the way it's not the way we should be working. But I tried it just for fun, and now now we know, and now the fun's over. <laughs> All right.
we were, I thought I had a mesh that I placed. Oh, wait, I'm not working on the right size. Right side. Okay, so these here. Um, let's mirror and weld them. It was just a it was just a little mistake to have forgotten to mirror and weld them. Um, I think the rest is there. Yeah. Okay. So these are going to allow us to have some like movement with the the feet. Uh, in like this direction like this uh, rotation is going to be easy so whatever pose we decide to do uh, nothing too extravagant right they all have to look like somewhat like stoic and not too sen sentient All right. So I'm going to try to have like a pinch here in the shape. We'll see how it goes. Right now I, I'm just Pinching the edges just to accentuate the really where I want the edge to be, the edges to be. All of this here is going to be an edge, it's going to be up like this. Uh, here we can actually separate the two meshes. Or if we don't separate, at least we're going to have like an edge or something. So right now I'm just really just applying some some logics in the shapes before I, I create the mesh. Just making sure like it kind of like logically works in terms of uh, just like how the shapes connect with each other, the, their shape, that sort of stuff. And that's the biggest problem with like how I worked on this on this mesh, like when I said the the going uh, backwards way, or more precisely going outside in instead of inside out. It's the um, now I'm going to have to kind of like adapt to what's on top instead of like creating my my shape and the accessories or like the top layers are going to kind of like conform to the bottom layers. 
which is just even like how nature works basically like didn't like our skin was not created and then the internal organs it's not the internal organs were created and then the skin is the layer that like just like holds everything on top right well if on a robot you work with like you do like the shape of the external plates first uh you're gonna run out maybe in the same kind of like issue where it's it's going to be hard to fit like things in so often good to just place like just do like the the first shapes and stuff and like i said the only thing that i allow to do first normally is placing some like primitive shapes that are very fundamental to the design but in terms of like the general shape of things no it's much better to do it uh inside out than outside in So oh, something else, a good trick is if you have like a lot of objects around your mesh, let's say your mesh is that pink part right there. Well, it's, I find it's often the best thing to kind of like design and model like how they connect to each of their like module. Like, and what I mean by that is like checking like the edge of like how they connect making sure that like it does align and work at smoothing the center part to kind of like slowly conform and adapt to, to this. So like what I'm doing right now is I'm making sure that like this surface everywhere is connecting correctly to this, to this like circle shape, right? Like the circle shape is, is a very dominant uh, shape in this area. And I want it to really connect correctly. And and if I, it connects correctly, it's just gonna it's gonna look like cleaner because this shape is going to be kind of like following a, a, a primitive, very solid shape. So and once I know it kind of like follows correctly, then I can like let's remove the uh auto save. I'll do my own saves. Uh, kind of like make sure that the surface around it is still clean and uh that the shape is correct right now it, it like it doesn't really need much correction right uh it was already feeling like pretty well done let's say
Okay. Okay, things are starting to feel pretty clear. Maybe this part here is not up to code, let's say. Just here, because here it's like fuzzy, where like, where am I going to stop the shape? Where am I going to start the other shape? Okay, yeah, I think I'll be <clears throat> rolling with that. So I'll keep I'll be keeping one mesh just to remember the, the design. This one hill I will work on it. Only on one side for the moment. Remove this. There we go. Oh, by the way, I didn't see the people uh, on the chat. Hi, all. Hello, Marco. Hello, chat. Hello to you. Hey, Marco, do you know any trick setting to make the trim dynamic brush easier to control? Well, the, the trim dynamic brush is, I don't use it often because it is hard to control, but it does shave off very rapidly a... Um, a surface and I think that that's its purpose actually um, anything else that I would want to do with the trim dynamic I just do it with the um, the H polish like the H polish is going to try to maintain your shape and its edges whereas the trim dynamic is going to like the H polish polish and flatten but it will shave off an edge so it's not good to control the shape of something because its purpose is to lose the shape, right? At least that's how I'm using it. Okay, let's uh, let's get uh, let's get going with that. But that's our reference. Sure, we have it. Everything's good. All right, let's uh, start deciding where we're splitting this. We're just going to draw, first of all, uh, with like a bright color, and then I'll subdivide a little bit more so it's more apparent where I'm placing that line.
So everything that I'm drawing with the darker color here right now, I'm going to, this is going to disappear, right? So that's all I'm, I'm thinking. And, every, and everything that's not connected can also disappear after like this part here will, will be useful. So that's how I'm, I'm seeing my thing right now. So that's why also I'm drawing the edge like that is I'm just getting rid of the um, what's good, like the, the 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 parts that are going to be like uh, jaggery if I can say. Um, how much organic sculpting, and make it look like. Um, sorry, uh, do you do how much agronic sculpting and make it look like a hard surface versus actually modeling? It's actually, do you, do you mind just like rephrasing it? I'm not sure where to place the do you do <laughs> to understand your sentence. Or I'd rather just like understand well, so just uh. Make sure I understand correctly. So just uh, just just, just retype it, and I'll, I'll I'll answer your question. Basically, I'm asking how much do you model organic shapes and make them look like hard surface, and how much do you use in Z Modeler in comparison? Well, I never really use Z Modeler except for some very basic uh, applic um, some very basic thing, or like like things like these, like module on the side, like. Um, objects that are very based on like a primitive or a cylinder that sort of stuff that like like in max you would use like a lathe or uh like whatever other uh option is out there like these are so like blueprint ish let's say on how they're they're built and they really don't have any organic shape to them at all right like i will mostly use um z modeler for, for for them right but sometimes it's hard to place like the detail so maybe like i'll start with the basic shape in in z modeler and um but now it's uh i i very often just like sculpt my things uh i'll i'll be using like uh, z modeler in the panel loops to make them look clean like that's something i will do like like often despite not using z mod uh z modeler right Sorry, I meant Z remesher to make the um, Z remesher in the panel loops. This is something I use often. Um, but um, uh, for like all the basic shapes of everything, I'm I'm often just like modeling in a very more 
like organic fashion, I'd say. So like maybe like those little like modules here, the little like buttons, but like everything that has to do with like the shape, the um, like the armors, all of that, like it's more like organic than uh, sculpting than anything. Organic sculpting than using H polish to flatten the surfaces and and whatnot. Okay, I think we um I think we drew every surface we need. Let's uh, give it a shot. We mask by intensity. We mask everything. Reverse the mask. Then we auto group everything. And then let's say for like missing something. Oops. I think I, yeah, I forgot to, uh, to finish the plate that's here. Oh, I forgot this one too. Can I forget it somewhere else? No. I think this time is good. Okay, so here it didn't really disconnect correctly. So what I can do is uh, I'll just go back. Okay. What I can do also is like mask by intensity, reverse the mask, and then hide this. Now at the the, the Separation is a bit like thicker. There you go. I can start by getting rid of like the, the sections that I don't need. I can delete that. Yeah, see those are those are all the sections. And um and yeah, what I can do now is uh, like some parts, I'm going to want them to kind of like connect because like I don't want these two to disconnect for real. I just wanted to have like a, a separation in the polygons that's here. So I'm going to treat things uh, this way. Like, for example, if I want this one to be alone, I can just like, for example, like give it a poly group. I just like um, pushed it, inflated it a little bit. Uh, well, actually, this one also I don't want it to be like disconnected, so This section, I'm definitely going to get rid of it. Actually, you know what? I, I realized that was not the best way of, of doing that now. So I'll, okay, you know what? I'll just undo this a little bit until I got everything. And what I'll do at this point instead, I'll get rid of the center. I'll no, 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 no.
No, that's not how I want to work. Okay, I know. I'm just going to I'm just going to draw what I don't want anything to disappear. Yeah, this is going to disconnect and this also. I don't want to disappear. It's either. I'm going to redo my separation thing. Yep. So this is all I actually wanted to disconnect everything. And for like the edges, I want to keep sharp. I'm going to kind of like then select them let's say like this and isolate them as a second action there we go that's going to be better There you go. And two parts right here. Yeah, those two edges. Boom. There we go. Applying Control W a different polygroup for each. Okay, there we go. That step is done. Um, I'm just going to read the chat real quick. Sculpting or guiding method and or IMM and or art surface brushes and or polygroup and or panel loops and or booleans. That's what I use most. But for basic forms, I use Zmodeler. I love extrusions and nano mesh. And always experimenting new methods and sculpting model. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, what was the operation you applied after painting the border? I didn't saw the interface. Uh no, no I'm not using polygroup it, but it's essentially what polygroup it does. It's just that I've I've drawn I've drawn what <laughs> I drew what I wanted to have disappeared, and then I just uh mask by intensity and then just hide or like reverse and hide. Then I delete what is hidden. So you see like, it's always like existing, right? So it's just using poly, uh, poly paint to then mask and then make something disappear. That's all. And it's, it's basically what polygroup is doing. Polygroup it is doing. It's just, I, like with polygroup, there's like one way of doing an, an operation over the entire model. Whereas like if I just do it by hand, I feel I have just a little bit more control. 
but but polygroup is absolutely valid um plugin and uh and yeah it that's it does the same thing basically and i'm just cleaning up the edges there was some that were really jagged and said modeler's not gonna like that Because yeah, the, the the step that's coming now is the Z modeler, and I'm not saying the modeler with a French accent, but Z modeler. So I'm just going to clean up my my shape a little bit um if you're gonna do this for the game pipeline would you manually retopo every piece there or is it remesh usually do the job now is it remesh does not do the job for a clean uh retopo for games uh for games things need to be like really optimized and um you can't really optimize stuff with like automatic processes. Um, I guess the more like stuff goes forward with like, um, with uh, like the nanites and in, in Unreal or that sort of stuff, maybe like at some point we won't need to do the retopo maybe but still there's like are are the riggers going to be comfortable like really doing this like a solid job with poor topology it's hard to say So I don't need to be super clean with this, actually. I'm mostly just like surveying that everything, that there's no like pinchiness or weird stuff for Z Remesh. I'm not trying to make things super clean at this point because I'd rather make the result of Z Remesh clean than this. But I'm just, like I said, making sure things is generally clean for the algorithm mostly. And also, is I'm going to just have like a little bit of a, um, how can I say that? Like, a, just, I have a French expression stuck in my head. Là. I'm going to spread that out. I'm going to be a little bit like ahead on the polishing once it's time for it. Yeah, that should be clean enough for the uh, algorithm. Oh, we forgot here. I'm right now making it on purpose to work with masked by polygroup, just so that like these edges are very precise where they are. All right, now let's 
do a little polish overall just to remove even more jagginess on the, the borders. If I lose too much of the shape, I can also mask by border. Kind of like blur the edge like that and then polish. Oop. All right. Um, and now for the Z3 mesh. So I'm going to actually tell it to keep groups. This is the, the entire point of having like different poly groups here. And let's work with, let's like, say, 2000 polys. Okay, so I see like here it did exactly what I wanted. Here it did not do what I wanted at all. So I'm going to look at like my successful meshes. Well, the, also the density is pretty low that might be why but mostly everywhere it's it's pretty clean there's like a little error here with like some stuff that can be fixed easily here it cannot be fixed easily so what i'll do is i'll keep this and i'll keep the parts that i'm happy about which is like everything but this piece. And here I'm going to keep only the piece. And I'm not sure if like it's going to change anything that I separated it from the other stuff. No, it's still having like issues. So um, I'm going to try to just change its shape a bit. Maybe it's just like a little bit too complex of a shape for, for it. I was going to say for him as if like Z remesh is a guy. That's something that's funny about the, the French language, I find, or other like languages of that sort. It's that like, like inanimate object have like genders, like a car. Like also depending on the, like there's like homonyms, not homonyms, but like, like synonyms, let's say like a vehicle or like an automobile, let's say like they're, they, they mean relatively like the same thing, right? But like one might have like one gender to one the other gender for like the same object. It's just like the word needs to have like a gender and it's pretty confusing I find for people that are trying to learn that language because it's it's just like there's there there probably are like some like super like deep rooted like rules, right? But a lot of like words that were like almost like invented or whatever, like depending on like uh, the region you come from, you might actually like use a different gender for that, even that same word, just because it's like a new word or something like that. And it's eh, just like it, sometimes it just, it feels silly a bit. Uh, oh, it's a green mesh. Let's try again. See if this time it's good. Said green mesh always playing trick on us. Yeah, it does sometimes. Yeah, it really doesn't like that shape, eh? Jeez. I'll just smooth it out a bit. Sometimes it's like, it's it's just like a like a little picky thing that's not super like. When it does stuff like that, often I try to just just kind of like make the shape it's more simple, simpler. Sometimes it does the trick. Right now it's having a thing having thing having issues. I'll um come on. I like I like shave off here like that. 
God damn that. All right. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. Yeah. <laughs> you see, it just needed to, for something, someone to believe in it. That's a great moral. There you go. All right. Uh, cool. Well, now we have these. So what I'll do is I'll right off the bat just create a thickness that I, I'll probably not even like keep. I'll just like use it just to have like a better uh, visibility of like what I'm doing. So like for example, I'll I'll use this as an opportunity to um like now I see a little bit better of uh let's use topological here. Like the thickness of things all around, right? Having a th the thickness is is just like a visual aid at this point. Because although it feels like I'm moving the entire piece, the 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 thickness part of it that it might actually like get skewed in the process. A bit like when you, you you create a tube and then you start to place it with the move brush, you're kind of like skewing it. Well, I'm skewing the the the, the thickness right now. I'm skewing the thickness. Sounds like a an idiom or something <laughs> the lyrics of a song of it i'm like a metal song maybe not metal i don't know i don't know where my mind went i'm not responsible of that uh boy we forgot to do something here back up back up back up until there you go okay so um, I forgot to activate uh, ignore ignore groups here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the thickness everywhere. Get rid of the thickness. OK. OK, I actually have to do an auto group now because I have to only keep the exterior part. Okay, do I have only the exterior part of everywhere? No. Okay, uh, now I do. So I'm going to actually do weld here. Weld, 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 weld. Boop. Weld, because and now everything is like reconnected. And now I'll just click this before doing my panel loops this way. See now it's now it's like it's part of the same mesh, which wasn't at first, and that was a mistake. So now what I'm doing also is like I'm I'm cleaning also like the profile of certain of like these shapes. I mean, you see, you look at that line; it's actually like not going straight, and that is a no bueno. It's just going to look not good in certain angles. So we have to make sure that it does look good. I, I already tried to do a little bit of that when I was um, earlier working on the, uh, the, the blocking mesh. But um, yeah, it was hard to, to, to fully see the... Uh, the end result and now it's like much clearer because we actually have like a very clean mesh so um if you're like aiming for for like top polishing quality uh this is absolutely something you should be you should be doing
if you're aiming for like design or like speed sculpt, this uh, is probably useless. But you see also it takes much more time, right, to, to clean it this way. Okay, so you see like for that section now, much cleaner. It's not following the circle properly though. So that's why it's important to look at your object in like many angles, because uh, like let's say like this is like the frontal view of that circle part. Well, and this is like the side view. So you do need to just check every angle here, the thickness is going to be um, important to be different for that piece, except if like we allow to see like the inside here. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just placing the the shape itself. All right, this resembles more the shape that I want. Here, I'm going to kind of like dig that, um, that edge here since it's like the, um, the shape separator. I, I just really wanted to have like a more pronounced uh, shape. Okay, all right. So that's pretty good here for that let's before we start polishing the surfaces even more well no like before we start polishing the surfaces dot comma i mean sorry wow uh we're gonna just like continue with like this kind of like cleaning of the of their edges right and where how they connect everything
Actually, you know what? Uh, bear with me for a second. I'll be back. By the way, the um, there's something else I uh, I had fun uh, like okay sorry, so some people like no some people don't uh, but like um, I started to 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 do painting, uh, not only modeling and printing, but uh, I just tested uh, like a new software for uh, slicing. It's called Leechy. I actually know the one of the guy that um, produces it. It's a fantastic software, and um, I also like tested for the first time my my new printer. Now I have a um, Anycubic M7 Pro, and um, it's uh, it's really cool. Like a, the 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 Photon Mono Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Pro, and uh, it's it's really great. I actually like this, did this, like this little guy here. It's kind of, it's like one of the, the, the test models. Oh, wait, it's not. Man, am I having a hard time with the zooms on this thing? Okay, zoom on this guy. There you go. The guy does, I did this little guy. Um, oops. No, I'll focus on, focus on. Yeah, there you go. Right. It's like it's their test model is this little like chick that you can print and stuff. And I actually also I painted it. I painted it yesterday night just for fun, uh, practicing my uh, my airbrush and just like the uh, the brushes and everything. So yeah, just a little something I'm having fun with um, these days when I'm not doing 3D. But yeah, I I super recommend that uh, slicing software. Uh, Lychee, it's really cool, and um, it's uh, it's just you can see like how much they're thinking about like all the possible options and everything. Plus, it's like universal, right? So you can export things out of it, and yeah, it's just really cool. Plus, like it's it's free. I mean, you can pay for like to have like extra tools and stuff, and they the like, extra tools are pretty cool. Uh, one of them is like just like a for me like a game changer in terms of like slicing software and just like um um user friendliness right but since it's like a like a special like tool that they create they reserve it for their pro version which is it's absolutely fine right makes the pro version uh worthwhile to get absolutely worthwhile to get and um but the otherwise you have the free version that can do pretty much everything all of the basics that you need which is uh which is it's, it's super cool. It's really nice. Very good, really good software for slicing, and uh, I love the the printer I just got as well. It's uh it's a super good one. Uh, the quality is top shape. Like the little chick I showed you, 
I printed it in um, in medium quality. Well, it's, that's how I call uh, uh, 50 microns, 50 UMs, whatever, how you want to, however you want to call that. I printed it in that resolution and the quality that came out was like super good. Um, there's only like a little spot that I can see like the layers and it's, it's, it's like the typical, like the end of a sphere that you always see like the last like little layers and stuff. Um, but like I sanded it out and everything was fine and it's, you're always going to have that. But if I was to print at like the, the higher quality, I would not have even have gotten that. So yeah, no, the, and it prints really fast as well. So uh, yeah, super happy of, of those things. If ever you were like in the market for a, um, for a 3d printer, I highly recommend, uh, the one I got. And also, as I said earlier, uh, lychee for uh, for slicing, uh, really good, really good. Okay, so we're gonna have a little problem here. We're gonna have to take care of that once we get rid of the the thickness. But for the moment, let's just place everything so it looks at its place. And also, I see the chat is talking, so let's just take a moment. Hi, do you think the Protoss design is outdated. For some reason, something like that hasn't been seen at all lately. Uh, yeah, the Protoss. Let me check again. Well, to be honest, I've seen a, a lot of things that look like the Protoss design lately uh like in some concept that like we've been working on or or other stuff uh it's like not exactly that but like you can see like the inspiration i i think it it's such a strong design that uh it's hard to to do something that looks like that without having like people comparing your work right which is like I never, I, I don't really care for people comparing my work to other stuff that they know, but at the same time, it, it's such a human thing to, 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 to share how something makes you feel. And if something makes you feel like it's similar to something else, it's, it's like something, even for me, like sometimes it's just like, it's, it's stronger than me. And I'm like, I feel like, like mentioning it and stuff. Uh, but um, I think when people are trying to create something new, they try to be as far as possible to something they could that could be compared. Although it's almost impossible to avoid. I mean, there's been so many things that have been created in the past years and and shared on the internet that like were just like saturated with content. So everything is like, can be referenced to something else. And even if it's something like absolutely original, it's going to be compared to like the next best thing that was like original or wacky or whatever. I don't know. But like I said, it's just human behavior to reference thing. Reference things, la label things, and do all of that. Huh? So even if it could be like annoying or um, at the detriment of something, it's just, yeah, natural, I guess. So right now, I, I see I'm just trying to make sure like both lines that constitute the the thickness or the width, I should say, of this part. I'm just trying to make sure that it is um clean clean and consistent let's say or at least enough Because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm focusing on really focusing on the edges of 
my shapes and everything, not the surfaces yet. Right now I'm lightly smoothing just so that we can really see the cavity well. Okay, so I think for the edges now we're good, actually. This little thing here. Now we're good. I guess I'm going to fix the other one. And um, we're going to be able to get rid of the uh, the thickness uh, now and just like make sure that surfaces are fine. Just because I, um, I wish I could uh, keep the thickness while doing that, but you can't because the back face is going to fight against the outer um, portion. It's just not going to work. So we have to get rid of them. Delete them. It's not a... It's not a huge operation anyway. And now what I'm going to do, uh, you can even um, mask the borders so that like nothing moves, right? Uh, maybe it's not, maybe you don't necessarily want that. Maybe there's still some stuff you want it to move, but like right now it's masked. It's just, it's, um, it's, uh, it's not visible that it's masked at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to make sure things are like just a little bit like flatter and clean, even in the um, in this like topology. Yeah, see, I don't like the fact that it's like mask and stuff. I think I'm just going to if I move something, I'm just going to like remove it quickly again during the final polishing. Or the the, the um, should just call that the. Final stat, the, the final check. Oh, I did forget to to move this part actually. Uh, Marco, seems like you found a shortcut for your panel separation workflow. It does. Seems like I found a shortcut. It does auto smoothing of the outer edges, paint border, mask by intensity, edge loop, mask border, polish by feature. Edge loop, mask border, polish by feature. Yeah, the um, yeah, I know what you mean. It's um, it goes a bit in the same direction as uh as what I'm doing. It's a totally valid uh. Totally valid uh, shortcut, yeah. I'd have to test it again to see um, to see why I don't use that as a as a method. Like sometimes it's just like I'm just really picky with like actions it does or the way it does it. Like maybe it's just like smoothing in a way that like that's not how I want the smoothing to be done or, you know, that kind of stuff. But I would need to check that again. So in terms of like really having the surface have the shape that I want, now it's time to to apply this. So this is where I'm going to kind of like 
the parts that might have melted because uh, when you age polish stuff, sometimes it flattens, but also like it crushes your surface. So this is why I'm gonna try to, to get them back. So I'm just gonna give them some like silhouette back, maybe using a very light smoothing um, and using it with the relax option. Some borders sometimes might move when you do that. Um, so I'm just going to mask border on this one. For the rest here, it's going to kind of like smooth the surface so it's it's more like So I, here I'm smoothing, I'm smoothing in control and I've masked the parts that I don't want to move. The mask is, once again, the mask is not visible. It's just, I know it's there. It's just me that intentionally remove its visibility. Now let's unmask. And you see here, I am, I'm losing like mass. It's kind of like dips here. So I'm going to reapply some mass here. Uh, here I'm probably going to once again do mask border just to make sure it doesn't move. I'm hiding my mask. See, the edge is not moving. Okay, here it start to be not super important that it's it, it gets flat, but still and the magic is really to have just like a smooth brush that it's not too strong. So if I've added the mass that the border doesn't move and I'm using smoothing to kind of like just like average everything back to its shape. And I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's going to be, I think that's going to be fine. Now this here could be flatter. There we go, I kind of like smoothed it so it... I'm going to repolish it when it's going to be the high poly, it's going to be easier. Uh, here it's all looking good, this is almost good to go, this one here. Flatten it a bit more, perfect. Once I got everything, I'm gonna give it maybe a little like polish, uh, crisp edge or something like that. Here, I'm gonna delete that square, uh, that's rectangle, I mean, uh, triangle, Jeez, wow. Okay, and last part is this at the bottom. So once again, let's take this. Um, Oh, there's like a little edge here that's uh, problematic again. Let's just bridge it. Go back to the drawing board. No. Smooth these. Um, Here it's a little bit more of a flatten that I'm going to need than a smooth. And so because like all those two lines were already clean, when I smooth things in the middle, it tends to kind of like just look good for both uh, circumstance. So that's good.
like for this one here, we can always try to see, is it going to work well if I just do like a polish by group? Uh, well, I don't have, the group is, is um, still moving the polys around, but uh, see, let's say we're going to, we're going to make a test. We're going to try to see if like this can actually like get polished by simply using a polished crisp edge here. Once we apply those crisp edges, so we're going to go with uh, panel loop for the last time. So these are going to be the clean panels we're going to actually use. And now we can assign the, um, the, um, hard edges. So let's just apply a dynamic subdivision here. So once we click on um, create um, create polygroups, sorry, crease polygroups, now it crease, creases them, right? But we don't have the, the corners for that. We're gonna need to create more automatic polygroup based on the angles and stuff. We're gonna use a uh, polygroup by angle and then like using the the crease option again by creating automatic polygroups per angle we avoid to do it manually so that's good we lose the um, the polygroup that connects here though but we keep the creases if it's important to keep the the polygroup then you can always get them back or do not use the, um, like mask these polygroup before create, uh, using um, polygroup by angle. Okay, so you see now that everything is creased, is everything creased the way I want it? Or it's close enough, I'll fix the, the rest later, I guess. So you see now I can actually use something like like polish by crisp edge and it does um polish a lot of these surfaces sometimes it actually polishes too much and also for like other stuff like here like we're starting to lose this shape so it's often what i'll do is i'll take like a um a smooth uh storm morph target i'll use poly, uh, poly group by by um edge and where i feel i lost my intention I will go and I'll get it back see Here I said I was going to fix something too. Yeah, this one. And sometimes the polished crisp edge is not does not understand really what we're trying to do. So it can be a, a bit of a pain in the ass. You see, like it did make things worse in some area. All right. So um, now final, final polishing. Also, I'll uh, I'll start uh, using a. Uh, different crease levels because I want my edges to just like not smooth completely.
How the oh my god. Okay, no, I didn't move it or smooth it, so I'm good, but I lost the uh the creases here. Oof, all right. I'm gonna slightly accentuate it here with damp standard, but like a very low degree of intensity. Just enough to really get that that cavity um, be much more visible again. There we go. Perfect. I'm being very picky right now. Sometimes I get in a trance of uh, um, polishing things. I appreciate the um, I appreciate the labor of it. It's almost like meditative. Some area I'm going to remove the crease. I want to keep like a roundness to it. And it already looks pretty good in almost everywhere. And sometimes using smooth directional also is works really well for some like borders. You have to be careful though, because it can really smooth out too much things when you're using it 
in dynamic uh, subdivision. So like with a low topology, a not dense topology. All right. So I'm going to fix the thickness in some areas, and then I'm going to grab the underneath layer and kind of like fill the gap where it didn't really fill the gap correctly. Okay, so to fix the thickness, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to grab the underneath layer and move it. In some area that I want the thickness to be like much, much larger. So that's how we're going to Actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to change it here. Maybe here. And I, hmm, I don't think I need it anywhere else. I think we're done. Yeah, let's give it the same material and poly group. At this point, I'll remove the dynamic subdivision, mirror and weld it the other side, reapply dynamic subdivision. So we've got it everywhere. And now I need to adjust the underneath layers. Here it's not, it's uneven. See, like those two lines were not really following with a flow, so it was apparent in the, the thickness. Here we're gonna like just each polish a little bit. Just make sure everything is kind of like flowing correctly. And I'm just gonna check if I didn't fuck up something by using H polish. Okay. Alright, clean, clean, clean. Smooth things on. Oh, I should check the chat. Yeah, sorry, I haven't. I've been distracted. I've been in the zone. Let's check the chat real quick. Uh, uh, sorry, guys, I didn't catch the name of the printer. It's a Anycubic Photo Mono M7 uh, Pro. I'm just gonna write it down. Here we go. Uh, um, do you have videos or classes talking deeply about shape language and design? Uh, there is. We have a few um, tutorials. I don't know that we we dwell. Like I mean, Cedric did most of the uh, the tutorials on the website. 
like to be honest i i haven't checked really like the the, the tutorial um in so much depth I think there's something to learn about like shape design and language for sure in there, but uh, I would say that like, uh, you, you can find this information in a, um, a tutorial about, um, like concept. They're going to talk a lot about that kind of stuff, like design theory, that, that, that sort of thing. This is like, not something that is or like necessarily 2D or 3D, right? It's knowledge that it's going to be applicable for, for everyone. So uh, even if you don't get like a tutorial about 3D, you can do like, you can convert that knowledge to 3D modeling afterwards. And especially like I, I've seen tutorial that really inspired me that were tutorial about like painting and composition while painting. And I was like, man, I can actually apply those things to like a 3D character, like the rule of three, the hier uh, hierarchy shapes, uh, shape hierarchy, sorry. Uh, yeah, there are a bunch of stuff that you can just like translate to, to 3D after it. They're just like theories that like makes something visually look good. They're not, it's not necessarily only about like, oh, is it like a landscape that you're doing or like a portrait or like a 3D model or a this or a that? It's like, no, nah, man, there's so much like art theory you can apply to to uh, 3D as well. So if you want, just go and there's like a ton of like free tutorials online of like, um, it's like, like small like pictures that just like summarize like a bunch of like knowledge. And I'll say it again. Um, there's uh, there's another tutorial I I like at this point a lot of people know it, but uh, Alex and Akal did a um, like a very good one on design. Like he models like a gun. Like something that looks like an RCP nineteen, but the uh, is our I think RCP nineteen is, is the name in Golden High. It's not the real name of the the gun, or maybe it is. I don't know. Wait, let me see. RCP ninety. Yeah, it's the name in Golden High. <laughs> oh wait, it's FN FNP ninety. In real in real life anyways he did like a, like a gun that looks like that and there's like a bunch of like really useful knowledge if you want to check that as well i've been recommending that that uh, tutorial a lot i bet alex doesn't even know like i'm sending people his way <laughs> called covert covert publicity there's a pinch in the stars there wow there's a pinch in the stars how poetic is that sound and there you go the h polish got rid of it Oh, there's kind of like a, a dip in the shape here. Okay, yeah, better.
Oh, there's also a dip in the shape right there. I did not see that last time. You see that, but that that smooth directional is not helping in that situation because it's really affecting the, the shape too much. Okay, anyways, is there anything else to to fix in terms of the um? I have to fix those strap here. Once again, another example of why. Well, there's been many examples, but like this is like a very like, like obvious one of like why it, I should have done the straps after doing these shapes. But yeah, I would really recommend like over the course of like the um the last two episodes I've showed I've shown like how it is to work outside in. So I, if I have like a moral for like the last two, three episodes, it's uh yeah, just really work. Once it's time to polish, really work uh, inside out. Because, man, that's been uh, putting, like, uh, stopping me from doing a few things and just complicating things also.
now I have to go over like every every sub tool that's over this just to see if like it really does work correctly. That's an entire step that could have been avoided otherwise. There. Oh, this is another. There's a lot of um, layering that is not happening right now, where like it feels like objects are interacting with the objects on top. But just like in in like in the majority of of the sub tools, it does. But like in some of like the details of them, or or like the nuances, I should say, uh, it doesn't yet. But I think this is something I'm going to fix while I'm going to like um apply the dynamic subdivisions into real subdivisions. For the moment, it's good as, as it is. Okay, I think there's this one part here to fix and then, then I'm done. this object was more of like a filler so we're we are gonna use it to fill up the the cavities and such All right. Okay, I think I'm gonna look at the results.
Yeah, I think that's gonna be I think that's gonna be it. So we got the arms that are still the the blocking, but um all of the arms that are still the blocking. By now the rest, all of the meshes are finally there. Uh, let's just check the chat. Um, struggle a bit. In, I struggle a bit with edge control in ZBrush. Yeah, I mean it's uh you just you have to um just like understand like how it works and stuff and uh, if you practice you'll you'll get there. No? It's just a question of understanding like the the, the behavior of it. No? Uh, honestly. Hard surface in ZBrush is probably one of the things that bore me the most, and I don't know why. Well, I'm sorry for you, guy, because me, it's one of the things that excites me the most. Um, ZBrush hard surface is a wild animal. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> uh, this is off topic, but do you know why sometimes when using dynamic subdiv and flat subdiv, the edges of all poly get creased even if smooth subdiv on top wait do you know why sometimes when using dynamic subdiv and flat subdiv when you say flat subdiv just you just mean like normal subdivision the edge of all poly get creased even if smooth subdiv on top it's um it's a bit hard to um to answer because like I'm not sure to understand I'm trying to like see it in my head um you know what you could do is um I don't know if you're on our discord if you're not you can just join it with the links uh under the the screen but uh, you can always um send like um something in the uh in the the help channel on the the discord with like images and maybe I'll be able to um to let you know. Uh, da, 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 da. Could, could you explain how local symmetry works? Sometimes I find it un uh, not usable. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give a final example. Um, yes, you can apply it in every aspect of art things, like Gestalt rules and stuff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Wow, thank you, thank you. Okay, so uh, just for the um, local symmetry, I've been showing it in, in my other videos. If you just go on YouTube, also, once again, at the bottom of the screen, uh, you'll find that there is um, a few uh, places, a few um, links there with like useful stuff, but you can also check our YouTube and there's the archived videos of what I'm doing here that's there. But basically, the, the dynamic symmetry the way that it works is that you really have to never um, never change the gizmo from its cent the center position of the, the tool. Now, if I apply dynamic subdivision and symmetry, like things are symmetrical, even if that mesh is not like in the center of the world, right? And it's really just the gizmo that constro controls that. But the moment I offset the gizmo like this, for example, now I lost it. I lost my um, my symmetry. So you have to make sure. Yeah, you have to make sure to never like move it. And it's um, yeah, it's uh, oops. See, there we go. Fucked it up. There we go. So if you never, if you never use the, um, the move the gizmo, you'll always uh, apply your symmetry here. The only thing is that for some, for some tools, it doesn't work like the clip brush. You see, it doesn't work. So it, it's only like uh, a few tools. You can like the maskings one uh, work. Just applying any brush to the mesh also work, but yeah. 
that's pretty much it. So you can start from like a cube and place it where you want it and then like never touch the gizmo and you'll you'll never lose that symmetry. Or you can also like try to reapply the symmetry on an object you've lost it. There's tools like um, if you go in like Z modeler, you, you grab like an edge or a dot and there's like stuff that's called like set a uh, set symmetry and it's going to try to like you click on one edge and the other edge on the other side and it's going to try to reapply the symmetry which works like i'd say like 80 uh, percent of the time it's it's pretty good but uh yeah that's pretty much how how it works there it's it's very restrictive but uh it's fun to use uh sometimes in some uh circumstances And also, um, Paul De Vega, um, it's, you can also like, um, tag me if you want. Um, of course, like, um, people that tag me, like it can get like pretty annoying and stuff. And, uh, but like, if it's just done like once in a while and just a poke, especially because like, I actually called you to, to do it, uh, feel free to, to, to tag me in the, in the question. So I, I don't miss it. I usually uh, check the Discord on, on Thursdays, sometimes uh, sooner, but usually on Thursdays also. Um, so, uh, yeah, there we go. We saved the project. Everything is good. Everything is good. All right, we'll, uh, we'll, raid, uh, we'll raid someone. All right, cool. Yep. Well, that's going to be the uh, the end of the stream. Uh, another um, one that, like I said, I classify as like somewhat boring. It's um, just placing stuff or whatever is 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 not the the super fun part. But because the super fun part for me is like the the blocking and the the detailing and that sort of stuff. Placing all the fundamental shapes is. Not the most interesting, if that's what you're referencing to as uh, Paul de Vega. Um, in that aspect, I can absolutely agree with you. But it's one that's pretty important for the final results, uh, for sure. And it's one that's going to be boring in any other software anyway, because you're either going to do like poly modeling for that, or you're going to use my technique of like Z remeshing. And, and in any case, you need to check your thicknesses and check this, check that. And it's, um, it's a lot of work for sure. But uh, yeah. Oh no, no. I I I see what you mean. Uh, um, you're absolutely right. That <laughs> it's doing it. That's like a bit like bad. But uh, it's 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 nice to know that uh, even doing a boring part uh, for the watcher might not actually be boring. So that's uh, reassuring to know for sure. Um, so next week, next week, or we're finally starting with the detailing of everything i'll be applying the same kind of like surface work as you can see on the left here and uh yeah